I do! I have a fetish for- Robot girls? Nipple lasers. It's got auto you. And guess what? That fetish is never satisfied. Ever. This is our worst episode so far. <laughs> she knows me as that guy. That that relationship there was like, mm, so good. Ooh, ooh, I wanna watch that. I'm all emo now, bro. I mean, if you got them all do it, society, there, there's gonna be some banging going on somehow. But fuck it. No, there's absolutely no reason for it. They said fuck your OCD. There'll be some sort of chemical reaction, and then bam, a baby will pop up. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Pseudo Random Podcast. Uh, I'm your host, CJ. Uh, here with me today are the usual co hosts. We have uh, Dan. What is up, guys? I feel really good today. Or not. Yeah, he's been drinking and talking about sucking his own dick, so, you know. <laughs> and we also have a uh, clicker here. Hey, how's it going? And Roberto. Welcome. You do know that that was completely out of context for people listening to the podcast, right, CJ? <laughs> oh, oh, I know, Dan. I know. Okay. It's it's called pseudo-random. I'm no, pretty it's sure. Out, no, it's called can... auto or self fellatio or something like that. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Back to All the right. topic on here. So, let's, let's talk about what the podcast is. It's not about talking about dicks or anything <laughs> like that. It is actually about uh, anime and manga, where we... Uh, yeah, we, we recommend anime and manga to each other, and then we watch them and talk about them. Um, one thing that comes with that is there's going to be heavily spoiler or heavy spoilers on a lot of different anime and manga. We try to say spoiler warning for certain ones if it's coming up, but half the time we forget. The one that we're going to be heavily spoiling today is Saber Marionette, which I think it's Saber Marionette J, right? Yes, yeah. Yeah. it is okay. Saber Marionette, because there's a lot. Yeah, Saber Marionette J, episodes 1 through 13, which, well, I should rephrase that. Two of us are going to be talking about 1 through 13, the other two are going to be talking about 1 through 12, because we didn't watch it all. <laughs> Come on, that was supposed to be a secret, CJ. That's uh, fine, Dan, don't worry about it. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're not going to expect us to be perfect with stuff or whatever anyway. Somebody's going to fuck up now and then. But anyway, um, so yeah, um... Going over the agenda, what we're going to be talking about this week, we have uh, Saber Marionette 1 through 13, Then after that we're going to be talking about other anime and manga we've been watching or reading, and then we'll move on to our random topic of the day, which is, um, what is a manga that you wish got an anime or feel that really deserves one? So, um, to go ahead and kick it off, we'll get uh, Roberto here to give a quick description of Saber Marionette J, because he's the one who threw it into the pot for our wild card, which I should probably explain that to. Our wild card is ones that none of us have seen. We all kind of just throw one in a pot and uh, do like a random number generator and pick one to watch. So, yeah, it's one that none of us, none of us have seen until now. So, go ahead and give us a little description, Roberto. Sure. So the story takes place in a planet called Terra 2 that's strictly inhabited by only men. And they've managed to create robots, female robots at that, called marionettes to be their companions pretty much. And the story follows this guy, Otaru, who finds a pretty much a unique marionette and his adventures with her pretty much. Alright. Um, so yeah, who wants to uh, go ahead and kick off the discussion here? All right, I guess I will. Cool. <laughs> um, I'll just go ahead and say that this show, uh, not really feeling it. Not a fan. Yeah, um, it's it's all right. I, I, I'm, I, I, I think it's fun. It's kind of fun watching some of the episodes and stuff. But I agree that like it's not one of my favorites either. I don't think I would call it anything more than an okay. I. But, I probably wouldn't even actually put it up there as okay. There's just for me, I there there's a lot of things I just don't like. I mean, I don't I don't like the art style. I don't like the characters. I don't like the story. The only thing that's cool is the setting it, of what it is and everything. But even that is pretty. It's pretty sparse and and boring to me. And I just really don't like the characters. They annoy the hell out of me. Especially <laughs> fucking Lime. Oh my god, I want to stab her. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I do have to say that one, I, I probably wouldn't be feeling the, the show as much either, but one character that, in my opinion, has managed to kind of compensate everything is a guy called Hanagata, which is the main character's... I don't even know much why he is. <laughs> like, he's his soulmate, Dan. He's, he's a creepy yeah, right. stalker, dude. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I was about to say, like, his best friend, but, like, 
he's very rude to him in the beginning, and then out of nowhere, I think he falls in love with him or something, or he was all the time in love with him. And he oh, just, yeah, like, that started making it so weird, man. Yeah. <laughs> and he just I starts, like, follow him, him everywhere, and I don't know. I was, I was so, freaking out. I was, ah, oh, God. I, I just find it kind of hilarious that, like, it's essentially a harem. Right? It's yeah. a harm yeah. show where there's the main character and three girls, but like there's also a guy in his arm. <laughs> yeah, it's so weird. I will say about the the only thing that I've really enjoyed so far though is that fucking intro is just nineties as fuck. Just like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like as soon as that comes on, I'm just immediately like, Yep. Yep. Yeah. I can tell what this is gonna be. <laughs> right. That's mainly how I got to this one. I was on a website and talking about what anime I should watch, and someone's like, oh, you should totally check this one out, because it has a pretty sweet intro. And That's they were right. About it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it has a sweet intro. The rest of the series is okay. <laughs> right. I mean, um, it's it's silly, and you're right, it is just kind of whatever. It reminds me a lot of a... The concept-wise, it reminds me a lot of the... Sh- sh- other anime I watched with actually Roberto and our other friend Steven uh, called Steel Angel Kurumi. He's still trying um, to get me to watch that. I haven't watched that yet. It, this it, it's so- kind of like this, actually. It's, oh, it's, a, lo- it. it's, it's <laughs> yeah. a lot like this, except I feel like Steel Angel Kurumi did it better than this show has done it so far. Um, the For one, I feel like the, the girls in that one are better um they have more variety i feel like um but the concept is not completely the same but there's female robots in it and it's they don't know like what's what and it's it's funny it's it's a fun series i watched it i like steel angel Kermy. this series i feel like isn't as good but roberto can also inform us because roberto is also the one that watched steel angel Kermy with me well, I didn't see all of it. I only saw, like, a couple episodes. Really? Oh. We need to finish that series, then. Come on, Roberto. Yeah, You're supposed to be the expert on this. <laughs> <laughs> the expert on something you know very little about. Robot girls? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is valuable to point out, though. It is It is a show from 1996. So, you know, when you, when, you, when you talk about the art style, for example, CJ, maybe it was just kind of, like, the style oh. of the year or that that era or whatever and also like some of the things that are big cliches today that were kind of tired off maybe at that point they were still kind of new and and different yeah i i kind of feel like that's that's why i don't like it as much i mean the art style that's just something it's it's just of its time there like that's just something like what the art style typically was at that time at least from my knowledge i could be completely wrong but whatever um, I don't know. I, I I've never liked that type of art style. Like, especially if if you just look at like Lime with her character design, it's just or really all the marionettes who in like I guess regular clothing. Like, their fucking earrings are fucking softball sized, and like <laughs> the little bandana thing that Lime wears is about three times as wide as she is, and just I don't know, just how they do the faces. It's just there. There's just a lot of things I do not like about that art style. It just it's way over the top and exaggerated. But I mean, like I said, that's something that's of its time. And and right. you do bring up a good point. Where the rest of it, it seems like probably I would have liked this a lot more if I hadn't watched as much anime from now. Um, because of all the things that they did there, they they may have been one of the people who actually set the trend for that. And right. I just feel a lot of people do it better nowadays. Like the comedy was, I uh, was mediocre to me. The harem aspects, like just everything about it, I was just like, I'm not enjoying this. Like the only character I really actually liked was, uh, was it Bloodberry? Was her name? Yeah, it was. She was the last girl that, that showed up. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I like her, but other than that, I don't really like anyone else. Yeah, I, I, with her, I guess I actually think I was a little disappointed because when she showed up, I was expecting her to be. Because the the main character already had, like, two girls that were completely into him, 100%. So I'm kind of expecting her to be a little different, but nope. Straight up, harem. They all love him. Yeah. For no reason, except for the one that they did explain at one point, that was that every marionette in this crazy world has to love a man, or something like that. No, not all of them. That was the ones who have oh, the yeah. thing. Yeah, Whoever right. has the maiden circuit need the love yep. of a man to, to function. Right. 
I do kind of want to play like devil's advocate here a little bit and say that, uh, although like as I said, I don't think I would call the show really good. Uh, I wasn't a big fan of the the story or anything. I did have fun watching it for the most part. I don't know. I it's like, been I hard watch... for me to watch it, man. Right. Like I'm, I have to like push myself through. It's not. It's nowhere near as bad as Dog and Rampa because I fucking hated that show. <laughs> but this one is one where it's just like I don't like this. But I guess right. it's okay. It's it's barely okay. <laughs> right. You know, I, I've been going through it, just trying to leave my brain out of the equation and just kind of try to to enjoy whatever they they throw at me. Roberto hasn't. Uh, what do you think, Roberto? I, I do think you're you're the one that might uh, be enjoying this a little more as well. I mean, I guess I'm at kind of the same place as you guys. Like nothing really stands out, but it's not terrible either. I kind of enjoy it. The art style is not bad, other than the shape of their faces. What the hell? Yeah, that's like the <laughs> worst part, man. Just like, just like the closest of line. Just like, oh god. <laughs> it's like heads don't look like that. No. And that was the thing from Bakuman that I didn't mention to say was why were their heads so pointy? Their chins. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's it's a weird show. It is. It, I don't know, it's, like we've said, but like we've already said, it's an average show, um, it's, I feel like, out of all the 90s animes I've seen, the one that I've liked the most, and you guys can see, I don't know if any of you have, um, watched this one, but it's, uh, uh, what is, god, I'm drawing a blank right now, um, it's had so many iterations. The very first iteration was only like six episodes. What was it? Space Pirate Girl. Oh, um, Bodacia Space Pirates? That no. was Boo Dan. Okay. Oh, what, what was it? <laughs> that, that was the only, that's the only thing that I know that has pirates in it. I mean, on the name. So. Roberto, blue hair, space pirate Tenchi chick. Muyo? Tenchi Muyo! Thank you. Uh, I, I, you've never seen that it's it's a 90s anime that i wouldn't say has similar art style but it it's interesting um it's a very short series though but it for some reason i guess i'm just thinking of all the 90s series i've watched and since this was made in 1997 i bring up tenchi muyo because it reminds me of tenchi muyo um that one's actually kind of interesting for how short it is. Um, but this series reminds me a lot of that. And it's like, it's an alright. So far it's been an alright series. I don't see anything interesting happen. It's kind of like just every episode's just kind of like another iteration. Nothing's getting expanded upon almost. Which kind of sucks. Well, well that's they not true. Yeah, I was about to say, they yeah. did try to develop the main plot. With uh, the whole situation with Faustus. That um, that evil character or whatever. I, I didn't really get like all oh, his intentions. Except I think he was he just wants to take over everything, right? Yeah, it seems like that. But like the the problem with this is even when they tried to like add in the a good main plot with all this and everything and actually expand on it, I don't enjoy the plot. I think it's another generic, boring thing. Like this dude is pretty much Hitler, and right. he's trying to take over everywhere. Like Hitler, and I don't know. It's it it. it it's not a very inspired story, I guess I would say. Right. Because if you notice, that it's drawing a lot of parallel to, to actual history. Because I think yeah. the story starts off with them invading Peter's land, and that's like Russia and whatnot. They even call him Fuhrer a lot from like the version that I've been watching. It's actually kind of funny. Huh. I mean, it pretty much that's what it is. It's, it's, it's Nazi Germany. Yeah. It's like, I don't know. It's it's I guess because of stuff like that is just not not really entertaining to me because i mean even even that like even pulling out the thing where it's just like nazi germany it's like you're you're not even fully committing to that and actually being nazi germany with hitler taking over people and stuff you're just trying to mimic that and not doing a great job at it the only thing it's funny that the foss dude i actually did find him kind of funny because all he ever does is sit in a chair look at monitors and drink wine and yell at people <laughs> <laughs> that is the only things i have ever seen him do it's great <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much true. Uh, anyway. yeah, no, the the plot is very ridiculous and simplistic, and I think for the most part, it's just a device to to, to get 
like whatever they want to progress progressing. I don't know, like just get, almost like an excuse to to keep showing the characters and uh, like the hair scenes and everything. But it it is kind of a very weird show though because it, it to me it doesn't feel like it commits to any of the things that it's trying to do. You know, so like yeah. it doesn't really commit to the plot because some things just don't make any sense and are just like very ridiculous. Like you you want to uh, know what would make this. Almost like a normal, typical show today, and actually pro- possibly make it a hit, like even more than it is or whatever. Right. The thing I just realized this is missing the most of, because I watched a lot of shows similar to this. The only difference is a lot of the other shows were heavy edgy. Right. Right. Yeah. If yeah. that had edgy, I probably would enjoy this a lot more because that's a formula I'm used to, and it seems like without that, it just shows how how dull and like lifeless the rest of the show actually is to me right yeah because it, it didn't seem like they committed much to, to making a a very good plot they didn't commit to making etchy as you said or even like just to making i think more entertaining harem and again i do find it funny at some parts as i said before it's kind of just like a somewhat of a, a good point but still like it, it's it doesn't commit to the comedy either you know it, it's not it was not as funny as, as as it could be either, and I don't know. I don't know. It, it, I guess it just isn't really that well put together, in my opinion. It's meh. Actually, that thinking about it, there's something I did want to discuss with this because this is something uh, we haven't really talked about yet. Um, since we're doing the the wild card stuff now, are we actually going to have any rules where if none of us like it, we're just going to drop it? Actually. Maybe. Yeah, maybe we could do something like that. I think it depends on how bad and how we yeah. how bad it is. I mean this right. series I wouldn't say is god awful, but um I I can see us saying, Oh, alright, this is just terrible, we can't continue. We're just going to cut it out and then we'll say why we couldn't continue and stuff like that. Um But I'm willing to give it a fair shake for another uh, pretty much till because next week we'll be done with it so yeah. or we should be done with it so it's finishable it's definitely finishable in my opinion all right <laughs> CJ, oh, don't it. sound so good <laughs> I, I tried to work my way out of it <laughs> you guys just saw through my ruse i was so your, your close clever ruse now, it's uh, definitely, I want to see it to the end, because who knows, it might have the best ending of any series ever. I no. doubt it, but... I can almost guarantee it from, from I, the way the rest of the show's been. No. I doubt it. Eh, they, could, they, could, they could shock you. They could pull the, something over your eyes. The only way you could get that good from here on out is they pulled a fucking um, Samurai Flamenco on it and just went batshit crazy <laughs> out of nowhere. That's a- that would be the only way they'd be able to make this like have a really fucking good ending. Sorry, I don't think that's happening. The only it's series not. that can do that <laughs> is Samurai Flamenco. Yeah. Like, I've never seen a series do it that drastically and be so good at it. Yeah. You did bring up what could be some good discussion point for this, though. Like, where do you, where do you guys think the series will go next? Predictions for the next twelve episodes that we're gonna watch. You know, okay, so. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe like, they're gonna discover a way to make women. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, actually make real women. <laughs> like, right, I so have no fucking women. idea. That'd be pretty crazy. <laughs> We no longer need robots, and they could have human emotions. Actually, have have they have they at all uh, discussed the point as to whether or not the marionettes are bangable? <laughs> That's a good no, good question, haven't. CJ. They have not, I don't know about this, <laughs> right? Uh, but it's I think it's argumentable at this point if that word even exists. Because it's arguable, Dan. <laughs> yeah, arguable. Yeah. Okay. That's it. thank you, thank you. Still not as bad as Black Swan, though. <laughs> that was a long time ago, CJ. You don't have to bring that up. Oh, I'm going um, to every time, Dan. <laughs> all right. So, in the beginning, when the main character Otaru kind of shows that he's feeling, he he might have uh, some kind of feeling for his marionettes. Everybody re- reacts to that in a weird way, like, "Oh, why do you even care? They're just robots or whatever." Which kind of made me think that they don't really have any relations, uh, I mean, sexual relations with them. However, I did see at some point, like, there are some points in the show where they just show quick, 
like quick flashes of just random marionettes being used by people and stuff. And at one point, it did seem like some <laughs> did guy. Did you see was one like, where like a dude was just in the background <laughs> banging her or something? <laughs> I wish it did. It should probably be a little better in that case. But no. But I, I think I did see something like one of them dressed in kind of a weird way, um, or like a short skirt or something, and holding hands with a guy or whatever. And I was like, oh, seems like that Marinette does some special services for that guy. But I, I could be misjudging it. So I don't know. I don't know at all. I'm, I'm assuming there's at least special models that do that because... I mean, if you got an all dude society, there's there's gonna be some banging going on somehow. Right. Either it's gonna be with the marionettes, or it's gonna be dudes on dudes, or something's gonna happen. Exactly. Oh god, I, no. I, I oh, think. that explains no. the fucking exactly. second no. guy. <laughs> no. Yep. No, it's not gonna go there. They're gonna do the marionettes. <laughs> there will be some okay. sort of chemical reaction, and then bam, a baby will pop up. No, it doesn't not at all, Clicker. Right. Look, do we need to have the talk with you again? <laughs> <laughs> Roberto, we've <laughs> gone over this. I never had that yeah. talk. Ever. Really? That explains never... a lot of things, Clucker. Yeah. Never had that talk. How did you discover Man, this, I'm then, surprised. Clucker? Let's let's discuss this. Why do we have to discuss this? <laughs> because it, it, it's a better point to discuss than Saber Marinette so far. Well, that, you brought <laughs> it up. a better point to discuss. <laughs> <laughs> There's no point. The point is I didn't have the discussion. That's, that, that's all there is to it. Oh, I do was have it? a story for that, though. Oh, I, I see it with like Clickers, the the fucking recent game of the. I think it's called How Do You Do the Sex, and you like <laughs> it's this girl that has just like two two like a, a Ken and a Barbie doll, and she's just kind of like smashing them together. <laughs> and it's it's pretty oh, funny. God. Like my parents tried <laughs> to have the talk with me for the first time when I was in fourth grade, or it was either like third or fourth grade or something. And I do think maybe I was a little too young, because as soon as they started, I was like, shit, I know where this is going. I don't want to be part of this. And I kind of ended the conversation <laughs> right there. And I just kept saying, no, I know I know how it works. I know how it works. And I kept, like, being in denial. But, um, so we, we, so I never actually had the talk either. I mean, I, I learned things in school and stuff. And thank God I learned things in school, because for some reason, for a while, I think... You know, either, I don't remember now if it was after that or if it was when I was younger, but for the longest time, I actually thought he used the other hole. <laughs> Forget. I'm probably going to cut that off. <laughs> let's, let's, let's move on. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, that was weird. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. Yeah, so predictions. <laughs> Bring it back. Bring it back. <laughs> this um, is our worst episode so <laughs> No, this is the best episode so far. <laughs> Probably, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh. predictions. So predictions are they're gonna fight the like Hitler guy and probably win, and then it'd be interesting. The one thing I would love to see in the series, and I would love this if they actually did it, is if they had an epilogue showing what happens like after they defeat this guy, and if they have an epilogue showing like the future of what will become of the society when they finally do all this stuff, and if the main character gets with the main marionette and everything like that, and if they do produce a like a population of females, it'd be nice to see kind of like an epilogue. And not many, not many animes do it. And if this series does it, I'll be happy to see that. Um, I think I, I would love to see that. I think I have something that will be much better than all of that. What's that? If somehow the marionettes figured out how to do like nipple lasers. <laughs> 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 okay. It would make the show significantly more entertaining. <laughs> Like, full on, like, Austin Powers style with, like, the fembots. Only just, oh like, lasers or something. CJ, so much better. <laughs> they can't be Von Stronheim. They can't have giant hey, lasers that was, that was his tour shooting style. out of their chests. It doesn't work that way. No, no, it's just the nipple. You just have, like, little, little lasers coming out of the nipples. I've seen it in other anime. It's fucking hilarious. <laughs> I do have a second prediction to counter Clucker's prediction, though. I do not think the harm will ever get resolved. I don't no. think he's going to get any of them. I, I highly doubt that as well. Uh, you're probably right. Yeah, so I think they're going to fight the the evil guy. I think there's probably going to be like six or seven more 
self-contained, useless episodes. Like, let's uh, go to the hot springs. No, or... Another thing I think is going to happen is that I'm assuming there's probably going to be at least, like, a couple more of the the special marionettes that are going to pop up. Just to right. just to keep things interesting and different. Yeah, I do. Well, I do wonder what would happen to those three as well. The three, including the one that the main character kissed in that episode. Yeah, that worked for Faustus. I I can see them all like joining forces <laughs> at one point as well. I just remember I was actually watching that with Steven a little bit ago, and um, whenever they're like, "Hey, they got to do something to like." fuck with their emotions or something like that and i i realized just how like bad my mind is where i was like oh she he could, he could just go kiss her and then the next thing my mind leaped <laughs> for some reason like oh you can put a stick in her mouth or something like that it's like then i was immediately like wow what the fuck is wrong with me <laughs> like i don't yeah. know i didn't think he would kiss her actually i thought he, w- he was gonna shout something well that's actually the first I, thing i thought then i was like yeah. oh there it is cool yeah cool so we did find something cool in this show no not really okay it was that predictable i could tell exactly what was gonna happen so yeah honestly this show oh okay i do rem- i did just remember something that maybe we could talk about what's up with the mice and like the girls like i'll be afraid of the mice but one of them well that's just kind of like all women are different and stuff anyway yeah but see they're robots and um when, when they are afraid of mice at the same uh, at the first part, they kind of make it seem like it's because they were programmed to be afraid of mice or something, and then one of them isn't. But like all the other five are, like including the three villains. So I don't know. I just thought that was weird. So, well, like I said, that if if it does go into the programming stuff, they may have programmed them all to be different because of that, because they wanted the diversity of different women and everything. Okay. All right. Well. I think we talked about enough of Saber Marionette. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't have anything else. I'm not looking forward to watching anymore. I really don't want to, but I guess You'll I will. You'll get through it, CJ. I promise. I'll try. Just to show you how much I did not want to watch this, uh, let's talk about going to the next session. Segway. <laughs> uh, what have we been, What else have we been watching throughout, uh, throughout this week and stuff? Um, to show just how little I wanted to continue watching this show, I tried watching <laughs> a few... And then I watched the entirety of seasons two and three of Bakuman over the weekend. Oh my god! <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> like just to put it off in my mind more and more and more. Uh, did Klecker or Brodo watch any of that? Like started season nope. two or something, oh. or not yet? Okay. So I I have not. I've time. been I've been too busy. All right, so that means we cannot spoil anything. But did you? Oh, like we can. Bet. They just won't be happy. You right. better not spoil anything. <laughs> Even right. though our podcast is like a spoil like everything kind of area, you should not spoil that. Well, we don't spoil for each other is the thing. Right. I know. Everyone so- else, fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you don't mind, though, since we still have a lot of time, apparently, uh, we could like I break down a little bit and ask you a few specific things, and then we would try to avoid like... Oh, you're going to be super vague about shit? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. But, yeah. okay, so... Why do you think about Miura on season two? Do you remember who he is? No. Oh, okay. oh I mean, say- yeah. Okay. Yes. 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 I did not like him. I was not- so glad with the things that happened later with him. Oh, okay. Um, see, I kind of went back and forth with him a lot. Where f- at first I hated him, and I was like, okay, it seems like he's uh, he's all right. And then I hated him again. Yeah, that's what, that's kind of what he- happened with me. Yeah. But I I ended up on hate and. <laughs> I think it, I think it was the start of season three. The big thing, big thing that happened there. I was like, yeah, yeah. yes, yeah. <laughs> okay, all right. So, what about all the? I don't know. Like all, all, all the new, specifically one. All right. I was gonna say all the new manga artists that joined the series and everything. But Hiramaru, what do you think of him? I'm trying to He's remember the him. Others, others eleven guy. He he writes a story. Oh, about that dude! That dude ended up being fucking great. Yeah, he was so <laughs> creepy at first, but dude, that dude's fucking amazing. I love him. He is like the best com- uh, comedic relief. Yeah, oh, he's <laughs> so good, and his fucking editor too. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that that relationship there was just mm, so good. I love that part of the series as well. Uh, okay, overall feelings for season two and three, respectively. Uh, fucking great and more great. I don't know. Okay, I need to actually rate them on my anime list. I think uh, I'm probably going to rate them like the overall series if I had to give it all one single rating. 
it it would be a solid nine. Yeah, that's like, awesome. Like solid nine. That's that's something I don't give out very much. It was it was fucking great. I mean, hell, I watched two full seasons in a weekend right. of it. I didn't do anything else except go to D and D for a couple hours. Yeah, and that's I, it. I love that series as a whole, and I like I love all the. I don't know, like, there's, there's so much that happens, you know, like, there's so much that they go through, even, like, during, like, after the end of the first season, you know, like, the end of the first season is almost, like, just the beginning of their careers, careers, right? Yeah. And, I don't know, I, I just love how it wasn't, like, at the beginning of the first season, you might expect it to be very easy after that, but ch- the, the same level of challenge, or even, or actually, like, harder challenges keep coming on them all the time. Yeah. I, I don't know if you're gonna, you may, I'm not sure if you remember this, but if you do, uh, why do you feel about the way it was addressed, the manga that Nizuma Iji wanted to end on? Oh, that was nice. I, did, I was not expecting that. That's the one I was least expecting. Yeah. Yep. Like, that, I, that That actually made me very, like, happy. I was like, holy shit, that's, that's fucking cool. Yeah. And it really shows <laughs> just, like, really shows just how far ahead the the artist of this show was actually thinking with everything and planning and scheming and all that and it was fucking great. Yep. I was I was mind blown by that. And it's funny because I was mind blown and then like when when we started talking about it on the on last two weeks, uh for a while I was like, oh, I can't quite remember what he used that for. And then I look I, I also rewatched some episodes like throughout the past week and stuff and I looked back at that and I was like, shit, that was genius. How could I forgot about that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh yeah, uh, for for the ratings of the show, I gave it an eight for season one, then a nine for both season two and three because they were both better than the first season. Okay, in my yeah, opinion, I can anyway. see that. Um, yeah, I think they probably are. I think I rated the first season higher because just because I don't know, I, I, like, I, let me put it like this. I guess if I analyze everything that happened in hindsight, I think seasons two and three were better. But just because season one had that very fresh feel of like shit, this is new and I love it, I kind of gave it a a higher rating when I when I rated it. But yeah, it's it's overall like as as a as a full series, it's it's f- fucking amazing. I really like Bakuma. That means that <laughs> means Clicker and Roberto should both watch the entirety of it in the next few days so we can discuss it next week. Yeah, <laughs> in more yeah. detail. <laughs> no. I can't. I don't know if I can watch the both season two and season three. No, the the only way I actually managed that is I I wasn't feeling well Friday, so I didn't go to work. So I, oh. I spent the entire day watching most of season two. Right, that makes sense. So I will go over what I did this week. Um, besides watching Saber Marionette, um, I pretty much read my ge- generic general chapters, and I want to talk to Roberto about Fairy Tale. Oh, I was so, expecting One Piece. Oh, go. <laughs> Go nope, crazy there was on no. the this is on break this week. I was gonna say go so, crazy on the fairy tale spoilers because I don't give a shit. Yeah, fairy tale. All right, R- Roberto, what do you think of Gray doing all the shit he's doing right now? Like, what's on your mind about that? It seems like he's trying to be so edgy about it. I'm not gonna lie. Really? Yeah, it's dumb. And it kind of looks just like Naruto, just how it happened in that show. Yeah, I can see that. I can, I can see that. Um, it'll be interesting because remember how I kept mentioning that like Gray said he would like destroy and he would destroy and he would destroy and, and we found out that N stands for Ethereal Natsu Dragon Eel. Um, what confuses me about the entire thing is he. He's now a wizard for Zeref. The one thing he was like, I'm like, I don't know. It's it's just all sorts of weird. It's gonna be interesting because they're probably actually going to have a serious fight. I'm interested to see how it resolves, but how it happened, like you said, is kind of just like what the fuck. Like he just was there one second, and then the next he was like, I'm all emo now, bro. Um. So that's weird. Um, it'll be interesting to see who they recruit next. Because they are probably easily going to get Juvia. It'll be interesting to see if they go straight into Grey. Or if they go and collect more people on the way to Grey. Probably um, collect more people. 
Also, what do you think about the whole, like, priests instead of, like, dark guilds? Like, do you think because they're forming this now, now that they've opened a whole nother, like, bag of tricks? Or is it just going to be there's only a single guild and that's it? I think it's just going to be them, pretty much. Okay. Because, like, when I heard that, I was like, alright, is he just going to literally extend the series now? Because, like, he just created a new branch of Dark Guilds. But if it's only just that single branch, I can see it being um, quick and short. So, since you guys are talking about Fairy Tale, I didn't mean to interrupt or anything, but uh, someone I know has recently posted a Facebook picture of her cosplaying as a fairy tale character. So if you guys would like to take a look and just tell me what you think. Ooh, it's not one? don't don't create high expectations though. Oh, wait, I was just now? like <laughs> I was just curious Which? to to know like who maybe who is that character and uh I will once what it she loads. does or whatever. Once it loads. Well, I don't even know if you guys would have Jane. access to see so it's just me creeping on your friend here. Jane, yeah. I I'll she will know never why listen taking... to this. <laughs> I, I don't know why it's taking forever for me to load this. Is it decent? It's, Seems pretty simple. It's probably <laughs> just, because it's Facebook and my internet hates Facebook. Okay. Just a week Anyways. Address. Okay. So back to talking about fairy tale though. Um, anyways, yeah, I'm interested to see where that goes. Um, I'm super excited for tomorrow because tomorrow is One Piece and I want to see what happened. So I'm super excited about that. Um... And let's see, what else did I read? I caught up on Gamer. I've been slowly catching up on Fang Shang Ji, uh, which is interesting what's going on right now. Um, I don't know if Roberto's caught up to that. I am. Okay. Um, and then I still haven't caught up on Bleach. I'm kind of just putting Bleach on the back burner so I can just like take it out in one go because it's Bleach and. I feel like that series is just getting extended and extended and extended. And I don't know. They need to finish it. They either need to finish it before it completely gets cut or bad stuff will happen. If they don't finish the series because the author just kept making and extending the series, I'll be extremely mad at Kudo. Like, I'll be pissed that he didn't give that series a proper ending, and he was just, like, trying to get money out of it. I will be so upset. I don't know if you feel the same, Roberto, but... Pretty much. I will be very upset if that happens. Um, so I've been putting that on the back burner. Um, and, yeah, that's all I did. Um, what did you do this week, Roberto? Been rewatching Claymore with the with the coworker. Oh yeah, I've also been doing that. Yeah, you've been there too. He had uh, uh, nobody season. remembers Clicker. It's okay. <laughs> Ouch. I'm kidding. You're you're quite memorable, Clicker. <laughs> Just half the stuff he says is like, oh yeah, that Thank guy. <laughs> uh, it's hilarious because I was introduced to someone um just the other day, and she knows me as that guy. <laughs> yeah, she literally said, "Oh, he's that, that guy. guy." Oh, so you're not just that guy. So, he's that be- guy. <laughs> before she even knew me, she knew I was that guy. <laughs> All right, sorry. Go keep keep going, Robert. I didn't mean to cut you off there. It's fine. So it's when we were watching Air Gear. You know how like some of the DVDs have trailers before them. He saw Claymore and he was like, "Ooh, ooh, I want to watch that." And I'm like, "I have that. I can bring it next time." And he's like, "Yes, let's do that." So we've been watching Claymore. Nice. And he's been enjoying it, and I love it. It's one of my favorites. I've also been really enjoying it, and it's the first time I've seen it, so I'm like, I like it a lot. I liked it till the ending. The ending pissed me off. Yeah. Great! No, I'm not going to be happy! (laughs) (laughs) I'm just going to be goddamn sad! (laughs) (laughs) Fucking great, CJ! (laughs) (laughs) Oh... Okay. That should just encourage you to read the manga. Uh, I guess. Uh, well, well, at least now you don't have your hopes up too high. I mean, that that's one uh, good thing, Clecker. Ah, uh, I, I, uh, so now that we're on that topic of how <laughs> animes should actually get the rightful endings, ah, uh, 
God, animes need to get more good endings rather than just cutting it. I mean, I understand studio costs and all this other stuff, but come on. Like, yeah. have, like, do what actual Americans do and have actual seasons and, like, take breaks every season. Like, release 12 episodes, take a break. Then release another 12 episodes. Take a break. Let the manga, like, get a little bit further and keep doing it that way. Like, that would be a good way of doing it, but people don't do that. It's like, I don't know why. I, I'm beside the point. Anyway, Dan, what else have you been watching or reading? Uh, I just finished Amagami SS Plus, finally, watching the... The last few arcs of that that I had to watch. Did you finish it, CJ? I completely forgot about it after I started watching Bakuman. <laughs> oh, okay. That's that's all right, honestly. Like, it is good. I mean, it's a good season, but I still don't think it is nearly as good as the first one just because they didn't have yeah. as many space to develop, you know, uh, new stories and everything. There's only two episodes for each character, so it's a nice... Yeah. It's almost like some nice little fan service in there, and... Like some closure for some of the characters, but yeah, not not. I wouldn't say it is essential, you know, for yeah. For I mean, I, like the first season, it's just a little I, more. I would agree. I mean, like like I said, I've watched it before. I just i I just felt like rewatching it because you made me want to talking about it, Dan. So right. I, I definitely feel pretty much all your points are like stuff I felt about it before whenever I watched it. It's right. it's good. It's entertaining. It's cool to have like a little bit of an extra continuation of your favorite girl. Really, that's that's really all that that was there for, and maybe right. some of the other girls or whatever. But I don't know. Yeah. It it doesn't add a whole lot to any of them really, except the fucking Rihoko arc that added a lot of closure. Holy shit! Yeah, no, I really like that one as well. The others are just yeah, pretty much fan servers. And Sai's arc, Sai's second arc is just. As bad as the first one, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, crazy. they have the same voice actor. I mean, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's that voice just drives me fucking crazy. Oh my god, I would have loved her if it weren't for that. Uh. Yeah, yeah, I do think on this arc she does a, a little more. Like she has a a little more attitude on her own because it builds up after the end of the previous one. You know, so it already starts. Well, yeah, with that her was being that was like a, the biggest point of the first arc. Like he was trying to get her to break out of her shell right. and shit more so at least on this one she's a little bit more talkative and a little bit more like an actual character <laughs> yeah. but i don't know just kind of got nowhere in my opinion and um i was actually expecting them to address the fact that this arc was the only one to have a narrator and he had a, the same narrator again in the second <laughs> arc. but fuck it no there's absolutely no uh, reason for it so because Sorry. fuck it why not is the reason yeah <laughs> I, I I seriously don't understand that. And you, you want to know something else that is very like that did annoy me a little bit too is uh, uh, the arcs on the second season they go for the most part on the opposite order than the ones in the first season. So you start with Fayatsuji, right, and then you go through Hyoko, and then Nanasaki Ai, uh, and then then you should get Sai, Kaoru, and um, Morishima, but for no for. For no reason, as well, they swapped size place with Kaoru. So, like, there's, like, this perfect order for, like, four of the series that w that is the perfect inverted order from the original one, and they just swapped Sai out of place for some reason. Just to fuck with you, Dan. That's yeah, all. just to fuck Pretty with much. me. Just, yeah, I just said, fuck your OCD. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like, come on. <laughs> anyway. Oh, so you yeah, got anything else? Yeah, that's, that's it. All right. Um, there's a couple more things I didn't, I didn't mention when I've been reading, but, uh, yeah, um, Roberto, did you actually get, uh, caught up on Domestic Not Kanoto? Sure did. That, that went very differently than I anticipated it would. Yeah, yeah, it definitely did. I kind of expected it to blow up on them. Oh, yes. You know? That's what I was hoping for, to be honest. Yeah. The, the reaction doesn't actually surprise me as much now that I look at her character. Yeah. Uh, I mean, um, it definitely makes sense with her character, because that makes me wonder what she's going to do now, because yeah. if that's happening, like, is she going to pursue some of the other stuff, or, like, or is she going to, uh, I can't say, figure out a good way to say this without spoiling everything, fuck. Right? Uh, I'll just say, it, it makes me wonder, like, which guy she's going to go after, because, you know, whatever. Right, right. That's That's not something too specific, so... 
that's one thing that has me very excited because I, I, I don't know this this has actually been one of the few manga that I've read that I'm just like legitimately looking forward to every week because it's it's good it's interesting it has so many twists and everything and it's just fucking all over the place yeah it's a good thing that's like uh there's still like 20 chapters that haven't been translated so there's a good there's a good curve oh that's good is it actually a weekly published at least uh front in japan oh you don't know i'll have to see when if they ever catch up the translations yeah Oh, did you ever, uh, you ever end up starting uh, Fuka? No, I still have to go through all the other ones. Oh, uh, okay. It's probably my next thing once I finish Madaka Box. Yeah, I just, I, I got caught up on Fuka. I haven't actually read any more of Madaka Box yet either. I'm kind of all over the place with what I've been watching and reading. I'll start one thing, then start something else, and yeah. <sighs> Alright, so, anybody have anything else they've been watching or reading to bring up they may have forgotten? I don't. I did yeah. rewatch, like... 10 episodes of Pokemon Season 2 when you talked about it, but that's about it. Just the usual weeklies. Yeah. Alright, cool. Let's uh, let's go ahead and move on to our random topic of the day, then. Um, so, where'd it go? There it is. Uh, so, what is a manga that you wish got an anime? Um, I'll go ahead and I go first. It. Why okay. not? Uh, really? Just from how it's been so far, because I mean, I, I, or actually, no, I'd rather it isn't. Um, one of my really wish got one because it's such a good story, and I think it actually would fit pretty well and everything, especially with the people who love romance and all that. Obviously, because it's a it's a heavy romance story, is a uh, molester man. Like I think if that <laughs> actually were made into a manga, it'd be really good. Because I, I think I've told you guys about this one, right? We did yes. a few episodes back. Yeah. Oh well, I for those... you are like, don't judge by the name. <laughs> yes, yes, because it's actually one of my favorite, uh, like, romance stories and everything. It's fucking great. Um, has a lot of drama in there too, and I, th- I think it actually would work really well because it's much more of a unique story because it's actually based on a real story, and just just the ridiculous things that happen throughout it, and like, there there are the so many moments where people can relate to like there's moments where the dude is just completely oblivious to what he should be and everything and all these things are happening it's just like because of how believable it is because it is based on a real story it's really good uh, i think it would work incredibly well uh as an anime and a lot of people would enjoy it and that's about it all right so i'll go next oh, all right eager there clicker <laughs> the series I want to become an anime, but probably never will, is Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer. This series, I can't stress enough that it needs an animated series because of just the characters, how they develop, the plot, everything about the story is really good. So, for people who don't know what the series is, Every time, or there, there's a life cycle almost, and every time there's a game between the magician and the knights. Um, there are 12 knights, and each of them have their own animal and everything like that. And then there's the magician who creates these things called golems. And there are 12 golems in, in sequence from one, one eye to 12 eyes, 12 eyes being the max. And these knights have to take on these golems, and pretty much at the end of it, they they have to beat the magician in order to save the world being destroyed by this giant biscuit hammer. A.K.A. it's a giant hammer floating over the world that's going to crush it. Is is it at least shaped like a biscuit? It is not. It is shaped (laughs) like a a hammer. hammer Why is it called the biscuit hammer? Because... Is it made of biscuits? Maybe. Probably. Does it taste like biscuits? It probably tastes like biscuits. Is it nice and flaky? No, it is not nice and flaky. It can make a lot of flakes. <laughs> it can make a lot of flakes. Uh. But that's that's the general gist of the series. And it's just there's a lot of character development throughout the entire series. Um, you get to see all these characters grow. There's a lot of plot behind it. Um, and there's actually, surprisingly, even a little bit of romance in it. And, like, you, you, didn't, you don't think about it, but then it, like, kind of sneaks up on you and catches you. So, it's a really good series. I really like it. 
Um, there's death, there's sadness, there's happiness, there's everything. And then it has an epilogue, which is a freaking fantastic epilogue. And I'd love to see that as right. an animated series. Clacker has a fetish for epilogues. He keeps, I like, do. bringing them up. <laughs> I, I have a fetish for epilogues. And guess what? That fetish is never satisfied. Ever. Like, as, as, soon, as, he's done have, <laughs> as soon as he's done having sex, he looks at the girl and says, it's now... It's not time for the best part. <laughs> it's not over yet. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's so bad. But yes, oh. Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer, which I'm going to make you guys read the next cycle, and I will ask this question to you guys when you're done reading it, and I'll be like, do you think it should be an animated series? And then I'm going to write a petition to Japan to make it a goddamn animated series. <laughs> Not even to the company, just address it directly to Japan. <laughs> Japan! <laughs> Japan! <laughs> Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer, create it! Uh. <laughs> oh my god. Good catch there, CJ. Good catch. <laughs> oh god, that, that would be one of the things that's perfect for like all, all the YouTube people that I watch that have like the their short animated series. It's like 30 seconds to a minute of someone taking stuff and just like drawing to it. Like I see them with that just like looking clicker, like clicker just writing out in big bold letters to Japan. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> going from there. Man, I'm. Yeah. See, I was actually thinking about this this week because I was I was actually looking through some of those guys who do the yeah th- those kinds of animated series and stuff, and I was wondering, man, I wonder if we we would be able to find someone like that who's not like super famous yet. Because if they're super famous, they're probably not going to care about us. But maybe someone who's good at animating is not that famous. You just like we cut like one minute of the video and just of the podcast and just see what they can do because we do have some very good moments from time to time in here. Yeah. Occasionally. Just agreeing with you here. (laughs) Yeah. Anyway, I'll go next. Alright. Um. Right, so. You guys are all wrong. The only series that is a manga that deserves to become an anime one day is one called Vinland Saga. And I may be (laughs) a little biased because this is the only manga that I've read. Or <laughs> not actually the only thing that I've read. That's how you read true. Pluto with us and everything. Yeah, yeah it's, one, he it's read, one of he the. Read Pluto. It's one of the few. So Pluto was good, but I feel like, yeah, just just because Pluto didn't like, I don't think had as good of an ending as I wanted it to, and it was kind of rushed in the end. I don't think I, I would I would fight for that too much, but obviously that would be my second option. And Villain Saga is one that is still ongoing. I think it has a hundred chapters out already. Yeah, or it's like at a hundred and ten or something like that. Yeah, and it's monthly, and it's been going for a long time. So I do think that if they were going to make an, an anime, they might have done it already. Or or maybe they're just waiting for the whole thing to, to end, and then they're going to animate the whole thing, which I would find awesome. But it's basically a story about Vikings. And it's more, more specifically, it starts as the story of this one kid whose father was murdered, and he is essentially raised by his father... Uh, his father's murderer, and he keeps like practicing with him and helping him in exchange of like chances to duel with this guy and be able to to kill him and to avenge his father. But because he's a very honorable fighter, he doesn't want to just like kill him in his sleep or something like that. So he's actually like living with a guy, working for the guy, in order to get his chances from time to time to just duel with him and, and kill him eventually. But the series goes, like, the series has a lot of plot twists and goes to a lot of different places that you wouldn't expect. It is mostly an action series in the beginning, but it it also develops a lot of different, um, I think it develops into a lot of different genres later on, including, like, even, like, politics at one point, and agriculture, and slavery, and romance, and it just goes to, like, like, it just goes to show a lot of different things. And it is... I don't want to say it is historically accurate because I don't have enough knowledge to say that, but it is based on a lot of actual historic facts. There is a character in the series called Prince Canute who actually existed in real life, and I think his story is kind of based on the real story of the guy. Anyway, I, I did read this because Klecker recommended it to me, and I really, really enjoyed it, way more than I initially expected. And I do think because it has like a lot of battle scenes, like a lot of really good action scenes, and just great characters that it could be made into a very entertaining shonen anime. No, That's right it. then. I don't think you've gone yet. Have you, Roberto? Nope. Go ahead, then. Alright, so my pick 
is going to be Liar Game. It was a manga that was recommended to me by my friend Jeff, and it's oh, actually really Jeff? good. which Jeff? I'm kind of curious. Ventura. Oh, okay. I need to see that guy again. I haven't seen him in a while. Yeah, I haven't either. He's out he in is. Cali. Yep, he's in California working for, what was it, Rockstar? Rockstar yeah. Games. Oh, Rockstar nice. Games. Good for him. Yep. Yep. So, Continue, Roberto. Liar Games about this uh, this kind of innocent girl named Kanzaki now that one day she gets like a strange package at her door and when she opens it, there's like a hundred thousand, a hundred million yen in there and she doesn't know what to do with it. Then she receives a letter saying that she's been entered into the Liar Game. And in the f- and in this in this game, the object of the goal is to steal money from her opponent. She has like a time limit. I think it's like a week or two weeks or something. And she has to s- steal the money from the other person. But at the same time, she has to return the hundred million yen. So if she can steal the money, she can return a hundred million and keep a hundred million for herself. And then the loser has to go into debt to this company who created the liar game. Well, that's kind of fucked up. Yeah. So, I, I mean, the game is, is about, you know, lying, essentially. Yeah. It's very much encouraged. And wait, you're, wait. You're, you're telling me right? the Liars game is a game about <laughs> lying. Holy right. shit. I know. So it blew my it. mind. <laughs> so, and every round, like, of the game, there are more and more people, and they're put to a test of wits to try to outsmart everyone in the game and get their money, essentially. So it's like a psychological thriller, then? Yeah. Okay. That lots sounds of twists, lots of turns. I'd probably enjoy that. Yeah. So I figured it'd be really good if it was animated. It did get a live-action series, but I don't think it really lived up to the manga very well. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's one thing that sucks whenever you go into like a live-action thing. It's like, it has to be done really well, or it, it, it it's just held back by the limitations and everything. Unless it's like a big budget thing, it can't really live up to it as well as an anime typically can. Right. At least that right. type. Romance is fucking much easier. Right. Well, I mean, this doesn't need much. It's it's very realistic. There's really nothing that's supernatural or crazy or whatever. It's just normal people who just happen to be of a higher intelligence, you know. Okay. Right. Have you guys ever seen uh, a good live action anime movie that he would recommend like a movie a live action movie based on an anime that he would recommend because i've never watched any of those i i can't think of any i'm trying to okay. think i think i attempted to watch some initial d one at one point but i don't remember how well that went oh i know apparently the Rurouni kenshin movies were actually really good oh uh, i heard I about this i didn't even know that existed and i didn't yeah. watch yeah. Rurouni kenshin a long time ago yeah, they made two live-action movies. I think they're making a third one. And so far, the first two have been received really well. We call that Samurai X here in Brazil. I don't know. If well, Samurai X is actually something different than Rurouni oh. Kenshin. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I messed I it's, this up. It's the same story, but Samurai it's... X refers to a different point in that story. When he oh, was okay. still Batosai the Manslayer. Oh, okay. So it, I, it refers right. to the brutality he once did, and then... Rurouni Kenshin is actually when he tries to be good. Yeah. Um, did they... Was the live-action movies based off um, the one arc in the series that had, like, the yes, mummified they guy? They did the Kyoto arc. That was okay. the second movie. That was the second movie? Okay. Mm-hmm. I would probably be really interested to see that movie, actually. All right. Cool. Um, Dan, how are we looking for time there? We still got a little bit of time left or no? Um... Not not much, but if you want to add something else, that's fine. Okay. Continue. <laughs> we All have right. backups. Sure, I'll I'll throw another one of mine out here then. Um, another one of the ones I I wish actually was uh turned into a anime from the manga and everything that I actually just recently read. It was probably about a month or two ago, I believe I read it, and it's um, uh, what the fuck's the name? Uh, my wife is Wagatsuma san. And what this one is about is, I forget how he starts doing it, but this guy starts doing uh, time slips into the future. I forget how long it is, but it's like, I think around five or ten years into the future, only they're consistent every time. So what happens with this guy, he he 
will essentially like go to sleep and have like this dream or in it or something but the dream is actually just him 10 years in the future where he's with this girl that he's always loved and everything and she's actually his wife now and they're living in the same house and everything and like sometimes he'll wake up next to her instead of actually waking up back in his bed or whatever he'll wake up next to her then it'll last like five minutes and he'll go back to his time hmm. and the really cool thing is you get to see things that happen to him where Something will happen, he'll end up saying this other thing to some other girl, and he'll do a time slip again, and that girl's his wife now. And he's like, oh god, what the fuck did I do? I want to go back to this girl being my wife, because he's like, fucking loves this girl. And, like, the whole series is about him trying to make sure that she ends up being his wife, and it's it's fucking crazy. Like, the story's actually really good, and um, the, the ending seemed a little bit rushed, but I, I think it would actually work out really well as as a much more... I guess unique romance with a with a different twist in there, like a different cool mechanic to make it different. Right, that actually does sound really cool and unique. Like when you, when you, when you said the name of the thing, I was like, whatever, it might be just another romance story. But I really like this. Uh, if you could later spell it to me, because I'm probably gonna look into this. Might be next week, actually. Here, I'll I'll just actually straight up throw you the link from my anime list here. Sure, cool. I would. Well, actually, thinking about it, with the, with the next round of stuff, we um, if if Clicker doesn't do a manga for us to read, I might actually throw one out myself. I yeah. already have one. Remember? Oh yeah, you're gonna force us to do the biscuit. The biscuit. <laughs> okay, okay. If, if, yeah. Even if he does, we did four episodes about anime already, so I think it would be fine if we started doing a little more manga too. So, all right, now I'll I'll consider it. I'll I'll look at what I have on the log for us to. To watch based off of what I've watched already, and um, yeah, that's something we'll go and discuss. Cool. And I'm, I'm not sure if we've said on the podcast, but I, I don't think we've actually decided yet whether or not we want to discuss it on a podcast yet, have we? Uh, I think we still have to discuss whether or not we want to discuss this thing on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so we get to discuss discussions. Cool. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we'll probably d- talk about that later today or whatever. Anyway, um. Let's get everybody else to have another one here. But that's, yeah, that's that's one of the ones I really w- uh, want to have an anime. Let's go ahead and go with uh, Clicker again since he picked it up last time. All right. So one of the series I would like, and this is actually uh, Manwa, and it's called Tower of God. Um, This is actually one that's actually really far along. It has like something like 200 chapters. So it's actually a pretty long series. Um... To me, it would be really interesting because the entire thing is shrouded in mystery. Um, so pretty much, like, it's so shrouded in mystery, it's hard to describe the story. Um, but pretty much, there is this tower. And only certain people are allowed into this tower. When the door opens and you're allowed into the tower, then you are considered a regular attendant at the tower. If someone gets in without permission, they are called an irregular. Um, The main character somehow gets into this tower and he becomes an irregular. And as you, as he like climbs through this tower, he meets like friends and groups up with people. And it's interesting because he, at first he's kind of this wimpy little kid. And he becomes, slowly becomes better better and better and better and better and better and is no longer wimpy. Uh, currently right now he's a pretty much of a bat he's pretty badass so it's interesting to see him grow and it's interesting to see all the characteristics that happen because he meets all these new challenges learns all this new stuff and then like right as he learns this new stuff some shit happens and it just like completely like flips over the table and like it, it it's it's interesting the does, off- does it literally table flip <laughs> I hope so. There there have been a couple table flips, I'm pretty All sure. Right. <laughs> There's also the best character who is an alligator. That's all you need to know. He's the best character. He's an alligator. Okay. That's, that's all. That throws giant spears and kills people. Okay, that makes him a lot better. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say an alligator, meh. Oh, he throws spears and kills people. Okay, that's a lot cooler. <laughs> yes. He's he's pretty uh, fantastic. I nice. I really like that character. So there's there's a lot of interesting stuff. Um what 
another really interesting character is there's a lot of thought behind a lot of this series and there's a lot of planning and for foresight and they take on these challenges and they have to plan them out and then they have to have this strategy to take it on and it's actually really cool um so yeah, it's a series I would like to see. I want to recommend it to you guys, but the problem is it's 200 chapters, so it's hard to recommend it to you because you guys can't balance out the anime with like my this 200 chapter thing. So, oh dude, um, I've read 150 chapters in a weekend before. Don't test me. I I'm not testing you. I'm just saying. Usually we try balancing it out to make it fair trade. So yeah. one hat reads like ten chapters, and one reads like one watches like seven episodes or something like that. But anyways, that Tower of God series, make it an anime. Sounds yeah. sounds quite interesting. I'll, I'll have to check that out at one point. I will forewarn you. It starts off slow, but then it picks up, and then it's awesome. Well, being slow doesn't bother me at all as long as it's interesting. Yeah, you'll Hell, probably like, like it. It's like um what the what the fucking chief editor kept saying in Bakuman. If it's interesting, I, then it's yep. it's worth it and everything. Like that's the whole thing. Like, I don't give a shit if it's slow as fuck. Most of the romance stuff I read are like fucking hundred and fifty or two hundred and fifty chapters, and they're incredibly slow, but they're interesting. Right. That's how I can get through like fifty chapters in a day and no problem. Just keep blasting through it and it's yeah. great. If it's good, it's good. Yeah. Alright, Roberto, I'll see if you have any more here. All right. Uh, my other pick would probably be uh, Tepu. It's this manga about a high school girl who ends up uh, pretty much starting MMA fighting just because she literally <laughs> wants to beat the shit out of another character. <laughs> That's that her only amazing. reason. Yep. And it's interesting to see that you know she's just kind of she's kind of like a I guess a bitch for lack of a better word. You know nobody really likes her and. Throughout the whole story, it seems like she should really learn a lesson at some point, and she doesn't, and I love it. She's just beating up people throughout the whole story. It sounds fucking amazing. It is. I, what? L- link me this. I need to read this. It's great. The only problem is, I don't know what's happened with the translations. They've kind of fallen behind. It's making me very sad. You just have to learn Japanese. Sounds like Roberto's type of girl. A girl that literally goes around and beats the shit out of everyone. Yeah, <laughs> I can see it. It's great. Roberto, she she Roberto never learns her lesson. <laughs> oh, that, that is amazing. Is this more comedy based or what? Uh, no, it's it's more serious. I guess there's a little bit of comedy. I love how the segment became like pretty much just a list of really good manga to read. <laughs> Like if you're looking for a manga to read, you could probably listen to the segment. And you're going to have a lot of great suggestions. Well, it's not just that; it's also ones that work really well with that format, where there's right. something different about them, where like to make them succeed at becoming an anime. Like I don't know hardly any of them where this girl wants to be an a-, a fucking MMA fighter just because right. she wants to beat the shit out of someone. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds amazing. And the only thing is, she doesn't like the look of her face. Okay. <laughs> Alrighty then. Yep, pretty much. It's like, I don't like your face, so I'm going to beat it in. Oh, that's the only reason she wants to fight the other person? Pretty much. Wow. That's that's amazing. I need to read this, like... It's not long. Later today. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Dan, what else you got? I don't really have anything else. I could say Pluto, but yeah, I wouldn't fight for it. It's good, but I, I wouldn't email Japan to, to make it, so... <laughs> Oh, I thought I, I thought Clecker was talking about literally like sending them up like a letter, like a physical yeah. letter. Oh well, yeah, I will send a letter <laughs> to the Japanese government saying no. Lucifer you didn't. And you the did not damn. say the Japanese government. You said nope. to Japan. So literally just <laughs> to Japan and put it in the mailbox and see where it goes. <laughs> I'd love to see them actually send it to Japan. Six months later, Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer anime pops up. I say yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow made it happen. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Um. All right, Dan. We we hit at least an hour yet. My time's all fucked up here. Oh no, we're good. We we can probably finish at this point. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, go ahead and wrap it up then. Here. Uh. So yeah, what we're gonna be talking about next week, um, which makes me kind of sad, but whatever, <laughs> is Cheer fourteen up. through twenty five of the fucking Saber Marionette J. Because. I don't know. Maybe it'll get better. I hope so. Because if not, it's going to be fucking tough for me to watch it. <laughs> just, just 
Try to <sighs> turn your brain off. I can't do that. That's why Eat I have trouble popcorn. sleeping at night. <laughs> <laughs> I have problems with this. My brain never shuts off. It fucking sucks. Uh, all right. Um, I can never remember it. Dan, tell them where they can find all the stuff at for the podcast here and Twitter and shit. Okay. Twitter is pseudo underscore pod. And the blog is pseudo random podcast at wordpress.com. For iTunes, you just have to search for pseudo random or pseudo random podcast or something like that. And I'm going to announce this right now. Oh. Although maybe I shouldn't, but if we regret it later, I'm just going to cut it out and it's going to be very weird, but. Or we can leave it in and I'll make fun of you. Yeah, that, that's, that's, I like that <laughs> that's good too. Yeah, that, that's better. Okay. So when you listen to this podcast, you guys, that means that pseudo random is probably available on YouTube now as well. Hopefully. So you just, yay. So you're probably going to find links to that on our, on our Twitter or blog or whatever. But also if you search for, actually, I'm not going to promise that they can search for it because <laughs> The search search engines are not that that great sometimes when something is very new. So, but maybe you can try searching for pseudo random on YouTube or just taking a look at our just our other services. It's probably gonna pop up in there. Yeah, on the I'm, I'm sure on the Twitter, which I think you said is pseudo underscore pod, we'll we'll have some type of uh, yeah. some type of tweet about it, and it, it'll probably be pinned for a while so everybody knows where to uh, check that out at. Yep. And, also, um, the WordPress should have a link to the actual YouTube channel. So you can also probably find it there. Yeah, we're gonna link everything together. We're gonna we're gonna figure it out if everything is set up right, Dan. Yeah, <laughs> which hopefully it will be. Wait, way yeah. to put pressure on Dan there, CJ. Oh yes, yeah, it's all Dan. Because it's pretty much impossible to set up on YouTube, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. Um. So yeah, for me, you can find me at uh pretty much anything that you would want to find me on, and Boom Coffee, which is just Boom Coffee in all one word. And you can find is, that at, like, Steam, Twitter, fucking anything. Is it Starbucks coffee, though? No, I fucking hate Starbucks. That is shitty coffee. Worst coffee ever. I'd it much rather... Co- I legitimately like McDonald's coffee and, like, everybody's coffee better than Starbucks. Fuck Starbucks. Fuck McDonald's, man. Yeah. Okay, I, I, I understand the, that you don't like Starbucks, but I wouldn't put McDonald's above anything. Seriously. The, the best American fast food chain coffee you can get is Dunkin' Donuts. Oh, yeah. I get their dark roast with an extra shot every morning. Hands down, best coffee you can get. So, so how, how about yeah. that uh, How about that sponsorship dollars, uh, Dunkin' Donuts? <laughs> <laughs> you can get in yeah. contact with us through, uh, through the, the, the Twitter or anything like that, yeah. You can even ask our <laughs> Colombian friend, Roberto, and he'll agree with me. And he's Colombian. He was grown around coffee beans. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> he, he, he just grew in the fucking like plantation with the coffee beans. And yeah, he, he's just a living coffee bean. I mean, that's what my mom told me. So yeah. <laughs> All right, Mister Mister Coffee Bean, tell me where where everybody can find you at. Then. All right, you can find me at rjr two nine nine two. Pretty much most things like Twitter yep. and all that shit. So, all right, uh, Clucker. About your All right, you can find me via Boclex, B-O-W-K-L-E-K-S. That's probably where you'll find me on Twitter, my anime lists, everything like that. Or you can look up my Twitter account, O-Klecker, O-H-K-L-E-K-E-R. All right, and Dan, I think you're the last one this time. Yep. If you want answers to your biggest questions about the universe, (laughs) such as cake or pie, or Starbucks versus McDonald's, then you can just follow me on Twitter at Lima Daniel M. That's all. All right, cool. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's it that we have here. This has been the pseudo random podcast, one of the shorter ones, but hopefully more entertaining ones. It seemed pretty pretty entertaining to me, if I do say so myself. But um, yeah, thanks we'll everybody for listening, and uh, yeah, we'll um, we'll, we'll be talking about uh, fourteen through twenty five of Saber Marionette next week. Yeah. Uh, tune in. All right. Bye. See you guys later. Bye.